is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time as we look to start the trading week. And we got markets in higher territory across the board right now. You're looking at an S&P sitting up eight points right at 4,500 on the dot. Talk about some volatility last week. Uh, we'll see where this week goes. Friday's action, quite the sell-off into the close. Just listening to the replay of my dad's program from Friday, uh, we'll jump over to the Dow. Quite the sell-off in the Dow as we closed out the trading session on Friday. You were trading at about 34,200. You traded down almost 300 points from the time of about the last half hour. You're looking at 3.30 Eastern time to 4 p.m. Eastern time. Markets accelerate lower. We were actually lower pre-market overnight as well. This morning, though, all the markets in the green as the Dow is back above 35,000, up 45 points. You get the NASDAQ up 35 points as well, trading at 14,720. You check out the NASDAQ. NASDAQ sold off about 150 points towards the close of action on Friday as well. We jump over to Bitcoin. You talk about an acceleration. We were trading at 36,000 last Thursday night. We're trading at 43,000 this morning. Bitcoin putting it on a daily. Quite the rebound on Bitcoin. You see those two days. You talk about Friday's action into Monday action. Maybe that's a bounce off the lows. We will see. But, uh, boy, you draw a trend line to back this up real quick. I'm going to add a trend line. We're looking at a daily chart right now. That's a pretty decisive break off that trend line. As we break higher in the crypto world to 42,825, you got Ethereum, pretty similar action as well. First concrete break that you've had of this trend to lower prices since we we're basically sitting at all time highs. Ethereum lining up where Friday came right into that price action. Today, we're up another 4.2% in Ethereum shares at 3,091 right now. Commodity wise, we got gold trading higher, up seven dollars at eighteen fifteen this morning. You have crude trading down fifty four cents, but all things considered, that's a one way shot, folks. We had a price high of ninety three seventeen on Friday. You put this on a fifteen minute, see the action in crude. Friday, you're at ninety three seventeen, pretty much just off those lows. We were off below ninety one dollars at one point. We're trading right now at ninety one seventy five, and we jump to the all important notes and bonds. You talk about a drop on that jobs number, man. Consensus is the economy is rocking, folks. Remarkable number on Friday. We were talking about the jobs number a lot last week. I was looking for maybe negative prices. I was living with a little bit of COVID exposure myself, not a little, um, within my family, kind of just relating to the fact that when you have an outbreak in your family, you have so many people getting it, even just the ability to cover for your spouse, cover for your kids, maybe they're sick and so they're out of school for a couple days. The disruption to life that happened in January and the ability for the economy to add that many jobs, you're talking about 400 plus thousand jobs added in the month of January, you're talking about revisions that were in the neighborhood of 700,000 jobs for the prior two months. You're talking about a million jobs additional versus what was maybe expected. I mean, you could have come in just to relate in terms of where we could have been on Friday with a number of about 100,000. Maybe there's no revisions and you would have been right at expectation. We crushed that by like a million jobs. We also saw wage growth. You add those two together, we have rising prices, we have an economy that is rocking on all cylinders. We need higher rates in this economy, folks, to calm down the inflation. With that, we fast forward. Thursday, we're gonna get CPI data, okay? We are dealing with a yield right now of 1.925%. Folks, we kicked off the year at I think 1.5%. Is that where it was? We'll have to look it up. We're gonna be at almost 2%. As we come into the middle of February, remarkable acceleration on the 10-year yield, uh, 50 basis points is now the question in March, not whether they're going to hike. We'll see that comes. Remarkable how the market just handled this, though. Uh, we got a note from JP Morgan out today. We'll get into that saying, guess what? Uh, rate hikes are now priced in, and you might be able to buy some stocks. I mean, tough to argue with in terms of the raw data. You got to understand, folks. It's coming. Rate hikes, they're coming. A lot of them, they're coming. The market, though, they know that now. There's no denying the jobs number that we just saw. It's going to be really interesting to see how these jobs numbers proceed as we're not dealing with an Omicron variant. You have to remember, 
uh, the survey week for the, the January jobs number was almost peak Omicron. Thankfully, in terms of cases, we are over the peak Omicron number. Encouraging to see where we go from here, but guess what, man? You're talking about CPI data, folks. We're gonna come into CPI data. We get the CPI on Thursday. You're talking about a number, they're looking for 7.3% over year over year. 7.3% for CPI. If you take out I'm talking about corn now. If you take out food and energy, 5.9%. That is the most staggering number of all because energy prices year over year doesn't get much more crazy than that, folks. I mean, yeah, I guess when you back it up to February, I mean, this is what's going to be crazy, right? The next couple months, CPI is going to be really hot. It's going to be what happens over the next three to four months because core number is going to be more important because we're going to be benchmarking. Oh, no, sorry. I was going back to 2020. Um, yeah, so we're going to be in the same ballpark. Nonetheless, oil is up about 50% over that time, folks. We're aware that crude prices are just up staggering levels in terms of where we've been. Food prices up staggering levels as well. You take those two out of the equation and Americans are still paying almost 6% for everything they're doing besides gas and besides food on a yearly basis. That would be the biggest jump since 1982 if we get a 5.9% number on the core number. That's gonna be a big number Thursday, folks. But guess what? I don't imagine there's anything too startling in there. I mean, yeah, you get like a, an 8% number or something like that, that could freak out the market, right? You get an outlier, you may freak out the market. If you get a number that's pretty much in line, we're seeing rate hikes. The market already knows that. I would just keep your guard up right now for anything that is going to push the Fed to a 50 basis point hike. Because if the market starts thinking that the Fed is really worried that they got behind the eight ball, and they're not quite there yet, Chairman Powell, listen, and you may disagree, but the Fed isn't quite there yet. That's what I'd say. That's Listen, we're all just stating our opinions, right? Only one man or the Board of Governors on the Fed really knows what's going to happen, knows where their mind sits. Uh, my take, though, is they're not quite there yet. There's enough tendencies in this economy for Chairman Powell to hope that maybe just by hiking four times, maybe this year, maybe four times next year, uh, he is not of the mindset just yet. But watch that CPI number because we get a number that's hot. You might just make the case that guess what? This economy is rocking. I was saying to my dad, um, I think it was last Friday with the jobs number. The discussion comes up about 50 basis points. Right. And I said, you know, how is it fair that when. All hell breaks loose during the beginning of the pandemic. The Fed says, we're in a disaster situation. We got to cut rates dramatically by 50 basis points, however many, right? They would have cut it by a full percentage, however many they cut it. They didn't do it by quarter, folks. Point being, how is it fair that you can only cut by more than 25 basis points, but it has to be insanity to rise by more than 50, 50 basis points? That doesn't seem like that should be the recipe for success. It seems like we might be lining up for 50 basis points. Now, we know how that goes, all right? The chairman's gonna try and avoid that if he can. But the point being, we're coming up to that area. Um, really interesting action on Friday though, because even if that happens, folks, I'd say we're facing some short-term volatility in a pretty strong market, which is what Chairman Powell has talked about. You're talking about a million jobs. You're talking about a strong economy. Um, you're talking about some big time numbers, man, for those tech companies beating, whether it was Amazon, right? Or there's Apple just crushing it out of the park. We get some companies this week. We got Disney, we got Uber. We got uh, some airlines, buying airlines, and we got Peloton that maybe is up for sale as well. We got a lot to talk about. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. I got a chart of the NASDAQ 100 up here, hanging on to the gains a bit, trailing off just even in the last 45 minutes or so. NASDAQ 100 has given up about 50 points, still positive by 20. You got the S&Ps positive by four points right now, just under that 5,000 point mark at 44.96. We jump over to Peloton shares. So right after the close on Friday, uh, Peloton news breaks. There it is at five o'clock that uh, they have some suitors, one of which is Amazon. Interesting to see how this comes out. Some chatter even in the den today. Our man Dan saying, rightfully so. And his quote was, maybe a little beaten down merger and acquisition kicks a bunch of stocks into gear. You can't argue, folks, uh, with the attractiveness of some of these equities considering the pullback they've had. Talk about a case of mismanagement. We've talked about it before. Now, this price chart is not reflecting uh, the price action today, we're opening at about $31. Now, you're talking about quite a pop, folks. But to find $31 on this chart, you're basically talking about still near basically lows. Yes, you're talking about almost a 30% pop. But you're talking about a 30% pop to $31, which is still going to be down $140 from where it was trading one year prior at $171.09. We jump over to the Analyze tab. Talking about a company valued at about... $10 billion, quite a haircut from where you were trading, which you were, what is that? You're talking about seven times the company, uh, quite a haircut indeed from Peloton. Now you back up Peloton, all right? This thing goes public September of 2019. You could have called it perfect timing. Folks, we're basically under, not basically, we're under IPO prices, Amazon getting Peloton at the IPO price. And I'm just saying, Amazon, there's gonna be other shooters and they haven't even made a bid yet. I think we'll jump over to them. $10 billion, man. Amazon can make $10 billion up in their market cap in a heartbeat if the market thinks that they'd be able to capitalize on whether it's subscription services. I mean, just to make your mind think here and how things think, go like this, you have a brand like Peloton that's become a worldwide phenomenon. Now they've become a worldwide phenomenon for failure, the way that they've managed the pandemic, ramping up production, waning demand. Uh, they're in trouble. They're actually at a levels far prior to what they were trading at coming into COVID. At the beginning of 2020, folks, in January, Peloton was pushing $32. That was, you know, just beginning when we were getting stories out of China, potentially with COVID, et cetera. Remarkable that that stock actually goes below that, but not surprising when you think of the one money they've waste, wasted building out the ability to produce supply at the exact same time that you have waning demand. $10 billion, I mean, you could just have Amazon offer those 
services as part of Prime. That's where your mind should go on some of these services. Uh, you bring Peloton, maybe they sell the bike at break even and they offer the classes as part of Prime, et cetera. That is what they're thinking about when they think about buying a company like this, et cetera. You got Prime Video, right? Now you can have some workouts, et cetera. I don't know if they're gonna do it, but you have to understand the appeal for $10 billion when you got a company like Amazon that is just crushing it out of the park. Now, you know, they talk about Regulatory headache for tech giants. I don't see it. Fitness firm, review options, Amazon, Nike reported as suitors. So Nike's in there as well. Higher regulatory scrutiny is one potential drawback for the deals. I mean, folks, I'm against monopolies vigorously. Amazon has some competitors on the retail side, right? You start getting into AWS, they got some competitors there, whether you're talking about Azure, uh, whether you're talking about... Google, et cetera, really hard for me to imagine that they don't have competitors in the world of exercise equipment. I mean, Lululemon bought a company itself, right? What was it? Uh, the wall unit, right? The mirror they bought. I, of all the regulatory crackdowns, and I think both sides of our government, both political sides are, are coming at these tech companies and rightfully so, unfortunately for different reasons sometimes. Um, but as our lives transform into an online metaverse, which is what is happening, folks, we got to be vigilant for some of the regulations we're going to need to protect our data, our privacy, etc. But I don't see a concern with uh, Amazon buying Peloton. You're talking about a $10 billion exercise equipment maker that can't manage their business and actually is at pre-pandemic levels and they got competitors all over the place. I mean, there's, there's, you know, turn on the TV late night, folks, whether it's P90X, whatever it is, I'm probably dating myself. I don't think P90X runs anymore, but you get the point. Uh, but nonetheless, exciting and the market sees it as well. And these tech companies got a lot of money and you've got a lot of companies that have just gotten punished extraordinarily uh and netflix is not what they're going to be buying but it does come to mind you get netflix up about two dollars you just traded from 700 down to 350 uh other companies that come to mind roku trading from 500 down to 160 now you jump over to roku roku 21 billion dollar company okay you're talking about a company that is one third of the value that you were trading at on two occasions last year Keep your mind open, folks. I mean, that's where you might see some of this. You got Roku up a dollar with the market, not saying they're trading higher on that. Uh, anytime you see companies get punished like this, Zoom shares, okay? You're paying 25% what you were paying at about a year and a half ago, October, on prices of Zoom. Now, Zoom is definitely not a $10 billion company at these prices. They are a profitable company to the tune of $43 billion, but you get the point. Zoom. $43 billion, a lot more attractive than maybe 160 or $170 billion in terms of what this was trading at at highs. And Zoom is a money, is a company, folks, that is making money. Now, I don't see a tech company going after them, but you got to start seeing it. When you look at companies like Peloton that's gotten punished to the tune of, they're almost in the single digit billions dollars. Peloton's a worldwide phenomenon. They're not going anywhere, but the multiples they have, they are not deserved in any way. All right, let's talk a little bit about Facebook as we look for the open. Facebook trading up a dollar right now in the pre-market. You jump over to the 15-minute action. They come out with their earnings last Wednesday. The market freaks out that they are not growing at the pace they had been. They're actually shrinking in terms of their user base in North America. They're burning money to the tune of $10 billion a year on the metaverse. Uh, they're losing money for the new Apple iOS to the tune of $10 billion a year on to ad targeting, et cetera. But boy, folks, you're getting into multiples on Facebook. You have a profitable company. Now, all the focus was on how much money that they are burning in terms of the metaverse spending, but they're still a profitable company. They're still a profitable company that reaches 2.8 billion people on the planet Earth. They're still a profitable company that reaches 195 million Americans. Not a fan of Zuckerberg, not a fan of Facebook, not a fan of Instagram for younger people in general. Um, the data that Facebook had, folks, in terms of Instagram, in terms of the harm that it's doing to young women's, young girls' mindsets in, in particular, but I would say, and I keep harping on it, man, do not stay on those apps, folks, okay? Because especially Facebook, it is a cesspool um, that is just not conducive to happiness, to put it lightly. With that said, I imagine 
that they are dealing with multiples now that at some point, and you, the pain might not be over. I was talking about it with some good friends of mine. Uh, one friend in particular, he makes a point that I'm sure many people are out there thinking, which is I, I may need to price average myself down a bit on my meta shares at some point in the future, but I'm not sure the pain is over. All right, great question. So let's take a look at it. Number one, we're trading right now at 237. All right, you're down from 384. We're going to put this thing on a five-year weekly. Remarkable that we are almost back, folks, to July of 2018 prices. You were trading at 218. You traded down to 230, I believe, last week. What's the exact low? Let's get it. You're looking at a low of 230.11, okay? You were trading at 218 almost four years ago, three and a half years ago. Now, what's interesting about four years ago, you see the bar I got on a weekly basis. On a daily basis, you had Facebook trade down as one of the fifth or sixth largest market cap losses ever. Well, what happened after that day, folks? As I put it this weekend, it took another five months and another 30% to find a low, and then Facebook shares doubled over the next 12 months coming into COVID. So we're gonna take a little bit another look at this. Facebook may have some more to go. You're approaching some lofty, lofty, uh, low levels of multiples. We're right back for the open. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we got markets open. We get the S&P right now up five points, sitting at 44.97. We get the NASDAQ up three points right now, hanging on to gains, but barely. We get the Dow up right now, 45, and the Russell up by three. We get the crew contract trading a little bit lower over the last, uh, 
yeah, about 45 minutes. We trade to 91.51, a little bit of volatility, but all things considered, hanging out pretty well at about 91.50. Gold up $8 at 18.15. We jump to notes and bonds. We got a little bit of negative action right now in terms of from the highs, but you're positive by four ticks. We're trading right now with a yield of 1.923%. Let's jump over the VIX right now. Volatility index, 2372. All things considered, we got a pretty elevated VIX at 2372. When you look that this market sitting pretty lofty, we're within 300 points almost of where we were in terms of talking about all-time highs in the S&P. You're talking about bouncing, folks. Hard to remember that we're talking about 300 points. We are still points above where we were trading at uh, the week of January 24th. All right, let's check out some of the action this morning. Let's see how Peloton shares are opening for the first time since there are rumors that they might be purchased up 26%, trading at 31.10 so far this morning. Let's jump to the Facebook shares. Now, I was talking about Facebook as we come into the break here, and I was talking about multiples. You're talking about a company that made $13.77 a share, $13.77 a share. And you're talking about a company that's trading price to earnings multiple for Facebook. Okay, now this is calculated at $239. We're trading at $238. So you're getting an even better deal. 17.1 PE ratio. That's pretty attractive, folks, especially when you compare it to any growth company. One article I'm reading out here says that's 50% cheaper than the NASDAQ 100 index, which trades at a multiple of 33.7. You're seeing a real hurting on some of those earnings as well, which is going to even bring it down even further. Um, something to keep in mind, folks, when you think about that in terms of the potential. But as I stated, anytime you're dealing with a company, that is going to be investing massive sums of money for technolo technological breakthroughs. That's a little bit cumbersome to think about, especially when Z Zuckerberg. Now, you got two battles going on here. You got the PR battle, because I'm doing this in my head in terms of where do we go here. You have the PR battle, and I'd say they're handling it pretty well. They got a name change. They got everybody talking about the metaverse. They got them talking about they're spending billions to get into it. They're benefiting from changing the conversation from the conversation I keep telling you about of what a cesspool Facebook is, okay? Uh, but then you have the other side of it that I think he is a true believer, man. I'm putting on that Oculus 2 headset, and I'm telling you, folks, even from an educational standpoint, the ability to put on a headset like that and immerse yourself in even a learning environment, right? You want to learn about the, the Great Pyramids of Egypt? The class is all of a sudden literally walking around the Great Pyramids of Egypt. You want to learn about... You know, the Civil War, guess what? You're walking around literally the battlefield, 3D experiencing things. It is going to become a daily part of our lives, immersing yourselves in some type of virtual reality. Uh, and that's not a matter of if, folks, it's only a matter of when. This market's fallen off a little bit as we look at that as well. Uh, and then you're going to see augmented reality on top of that, right? You're going to be putting on headsets. You're going to be walking through the street, and they're going to be adding, augmenting, virtual aspects within real life. It's kind of cool to think about, but nonetheless, it's going to be an expensive habit. But when you're talking about a PE that's 50% cheaper than most of the NASDAQ 100 for a growth company that does have some profitability and some future, uh, if you're okay morally with putting some money in Zuckerberg's hands, and I understand if you're not there, that's one thing I think about as well, because really, I think he has done severe damage uh, to just society with the way he has run Facebook, let alone uh, the, the privacy issues that go into it. I mean, folks, again, think about, they have data that their apps were just destroying the mindset of young women. And it really wasn't impeding uh, the way that they were doing business. That, to me, is a head scratcher, literally, in terms of how you go forward with that. Okay, let's jump around to what else we got going on. We got some companies coming out with earnings. We got one of my favorites. We got Disney coming out with their earnings this week, trading higher ahead of that. We put Disney on a 15-minute. You're trading up right now 1.1%. We jump over to the Analyze tab. You're talking about earnings-wise, they got their numbers on Wednesday, $9 move priced in right now. When you talk about simulated trades, we jump over. You're talking about a basically a $10 move priced in in either direction. Now, Disney's had quite a pullback, folks. You pull back almost right to that 618. The 618 was sitting at about 127. We made it down a couple weeks ago, 129.26. And then you bounce to 143. That's off of a high about a year ago. You're talking about 203 on Disney shares. They'll be out with their numbers on Wednesday. We also get Uber out with their numbers as well. Uber up as well, up about 2.3%. We put on a 15-minute for Uber shares, catching a pop 
Off of the lows we had last week of $34, we jump over to the Analyze tab again. You jump over to the Earnings tab. You're talking about out on Wednesday as well. That's going to be an interesting one. $4.50 when you jump over to the Simulated tab, about a $5 move. We're talking about on Uber shares. That's quite a percentage move. When you think about it, you got a stock trading at about $38, and you're pricing in a $5 move. What is that? Almost a 15% move? That, is that right? Yeah, that's almost a 15% move priced in. Now, that's when, folks, we talk to our man Kevin Hinks every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. If you don't understand what I'm talking about with expected moves, implied volatility, earnings, and you're doing any type of trading especially, but even if you're trading equities, folks, like this, right? Let's say you have an equity position in Uber. Do you want to hold that through earnings? Well, it is a good idea to understand what type of volatility you might be expecting. The market right now is saying, hey, there's a $5 move priced in in either direction right now. So you can wake up the day after earnings and you might be trading at 33 or you might be trading at 43. Are you okay with that as an investor? If you're not, you might want to think about pairing some of your position because that is what the market is pricing in so that is the expected move and that the market's never wrong folks okay that's the expected move prior to finding out the numbers when we find out the numbers the market will reprice where uber should be trading at but it's good to know especially if you're an options trader check out fast market at 12 noon eastern time folks they do an outstanding job we're gonna have cpi data coming up on thursday we got some earnings coming up this week they always have a great lineup to talk about but if you're talking about earnings that's where i learned a lot of that stuff and it is crucial stuff folks uh so uber's got five dollars and as i mentioned disney's got about ten dollars that disney ten dollars what is that about six percent pop in either direction for disney shares talking about their earnings uh the real number that this market's going to be waiting for though is thursday folks that's going to be the number in a big way now, what we also get on top of everything else is we get Peloton earnings, interestingly enough. Be interesting to see what they come out with. I'm sure they'll have some questions. Not sure they'll have any answers in terms about um, bidders out there. But you're talking about coming out with their numbers. We jump over to the earnings. They'll be out tomorrow, $7.27. There's a move for you. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of this volatility having to do with potential. This is where this is going to get skewed, folks. We jump over to the simulated tab. And as our man Kevin Hinks has explained it a couple times, the... Implied volatility of the front month exceeds the implied volatility of the future month. That causes a one-day market maker expected move. But guess what? We get a lot of volatility because we got suitors going after this thing, bidding to buy it. So you got volatility all over the place. But you can see, if you want exposure just through Friday, you're talking about $8.53 of movement in either direction for a $31 stock. That's because we just traded from 24 to 31. So that's going to be an interesting one when they come out with their numbers tomorrow as well. Now, I mentioned we get the CPI data on Thursday. We also get Hasbro out with their numbers already this morning, jumping over to Hasbro. We'll jump into this a little bit after the break. We're down 2.5% right now. Uh, I believe we got Tyson out with their numbers, didn't we? The chicken makers. There you go. It's hard to find chicken. The public's out of chicken all the time. Take a look at Tyson as well. Stay tuned, folks. Be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus can contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P right now up by eight points. NASDAQ 100 catching a bid. Check out that pop. We're up 92 points or six tenths percent in the green right now. The Dow turning red by 26 points. The Russell catching a bid as well. We're up eight tenths percent in the Russell. Bitcoin, 2,500 bucks. We're making session highs right now at $43,000 and change. You get the gold contract up about six bucks and we jump to notes and bonds right now. We get the 10 year right now up by four ticks. We're talking about a yield of 1.92 percent on the 10 year. So we got a, an acquisition. Frontier is going to buy Spirit. You got the two discounters combining here. Cash stock deal brings Spirit back to orbit. Um, ultra discounters target leisure travelers in COVID-19 rebound. You're talking about $2.9 billion. Spirit investors, they're going to get 1.9126 Frontier shares and $2.13 in cash. The deal is going to apply a $25.83 price for Spirit. Now, Spirit trades under the symbol SAVE. And I just said 25.83 is the price here. You're talking about a 19% premium, uh, and this stock pricing almost all of it in. We traded pre-market at about 24.16, but looks like the market much more comfortable pricing in the probability that this deal gets done. We're trading at 25.19. Uh, this deal gets done. It's only about 60 cents higher. The risk is right. So you got 60 cents of risk. It does not get done. Excuse me. Yes, it does not get done. No, that it gets done, as in it gets done to the upside. Uh, point being, the market heavily pricing in that this is probably going to happen or it's going to happen even higher. And I think it's a great plan. Folks, we are about to rebound and break out in dramatic fashion. I've been talking about maybe these airlines. There's Delta up 3%. Uh, let's see. Yeah, all the airlines catching a pop right now. American up 2.7. We look domestically to Southwest up 2.6. We go over to JetBlue right now up 4.7%. Uh, let's take a look at the cruise ships. Carnival's up 3.2 right now. Norwegian, 4.7%. Yeah, the market is paying attention, folks. Um, Frontier, now they are, what's this Frontier group, what are they? ULCC, ULCC, the market liking that as well, as they are up 3.2%, you take a look at the weekly. Um, this one only going back to 2021 on that, but the point being folks, they are doing the right thing here. We're about to rebound and you're seeing them spend almost $3 billion to make sure that they're solidifying themselves at a time that we're about to break back out and travel. You're seeing the airlines react in a pretty decent fashion. Boeing is positive right now with the market. No huge deal there. Uh, if you don't want to buy some airlines, Boeing may be one way you could get into that. But boy, remarkable that you're talking about trading basically at June prices of 2020 on Boeing shares at 208 as this thing struggles to find a bid in any way. Uh, but yeah, Frontier, they're going in, they're going in hard, they're ready. Leisure, that's where people want to be. That's the worry here, folks, right? You go, you go 
to one of the big airlines that needed that corporate travel, they need that international travel, you may have some tough go-around still for the next year or two. But you talk about uh, an airline focused on North America, based in Miramar, Florida, and Denver-based Frontier. Yeah, they are both ultra-discounters, uh, combination all about growth opportunities and creating value for everyone out there. You got both of those stocks trading higher, and Frontier holders are going to own about 51.5% of the combined company, and they're going to get seven of the 12 directors. So it's almost a combination here, right? You're going to have Spirit owning 48.5, I guess it would be, and they're going to get five of the 12 out there. Uh, you're going to have Indigo Partners in there as well. So you got a lot going on. Nonetheless, they're getting their ducks in order, folks, for the for the rebound. And this might be the heads up on some of those travel stocks. So pay attention to it. Okay, what else we got going on? How about Bumble? They got an acquisition. Maybe they're getting ready for the dating world to break out. It has not broken out yet, folks. I tell you, I was looking at the stock. We might get into this in my Echo, um, newsletter. Have not yet. You're up 2.4% on Bumble shares. Bumble on Monday, they announced an acquisition of Fruits. Not familiar, a French dating app. First ever acquisition. Uh, declined to comment further, but that was founded in 2017. Now, uh, they run a freemium model that most dating companies use where its app itself is free and users can add to the experience with purpose, uh, purchases. Same deal on Bumble. So Bumble, they're a free app as far as I'm aware. I was on that site four years ago, maybe, um, completely free, but you can, of course, subscribe to it for uh, premium services. Nonetheless, you check out this chart, folks. I have no idea if this company is gonna succeed in the future, but maybe that's a bottom. You get into this thing. If you do, set your stop. Set your stop, all right? This trend line in here, I was fine, trying to find a trend line. It's in there from prior. It probably has no business being in there. Um, but maybe that's a bottom. Not so sure that's the case. You really sold off on the last earnings when you traded from a price of 51 down to 37. But you see how these things go, folks. Sometimes when you come out with an earnings and you really punish a stock, just like I was talking about with Facebook shares, boy, make sure that if you're getting into it, you at least have an area that you're willing to take heat into. You at least maybe believe in the company and their ability to operate in the future, okay? As in, I have no idea if Bumble's gonna be around in six months, two years, 10 years. Okay, if that's the case, I'd better get a stop in place because there's nothing to say that the world continues to exist without Bumble, completely possible. As opposed to if you're in a company like Amazon, maybe you say, you know what, it pulls back. I'm holding out, man, because I know that Amazon's gonna be king giant uh, among many tech companies, at least in three, five, 10 years down the road. Not so much the case with Bumble, so get your stop in there, but anytime you go from 85 bucks down to 28, folks, all right? Maybe that's an area. They got an acquisition going on. And uh, my experience with them four years ago was pretty enjoyable because some of those dating apps get um, pretty useless where it's just swipe culture, et cetera. Um, but thankfully, I'm not in that culture anymore. I had a great weekend. We had a little birthday party for the little man. Unfortunately, we had COVID going on last weekend, last week. His official birthday was Wednesday, last Wednesday. So we had a nice party for him last Wednesday. Uh, but then we had some family over on Sunday. Finally, everyone kind of uh, at least tasting negative over COVID, still dealing with a couple coughs in the house as uh, that can persist for a bit, but everybody doing well. Uh, so we had a nice birthday party for the little man turning one. Can't believe it's been a year already. Time is time is crazy, folks. All right, let's jump around to some of the stocks as we come into this break. We got Peloton shares continuing to trade higher. We're up 27% right now at 3135. Amazon shares up 1.6%, continuing the run. I talked about Disney and Uber with earnings this week. We got Disney up 1% right now. Uh, jumping over to other companies. So we got Disney and Uber. Now, Disney, excuse me, both of those companies. Um, are gonna be out with their numbers Wednesday after the close, all right? What is gonna happen is we get Lyft numbers Tuesday after the close, and it seems like we always get Lyft one day prior to Uber numbers, so that will lead Uber, Uber will trade off that. We get Lyft numbers on Tuesday. Uh, what we also get, jumping around, yeah, we get Chipotle after the bell on Tuesday as well. That's always an interesting one. They have been doing really well lately, to put it lightly. Uh, I mean, yeah, quite a pullback, but man, they transformed things. Look at this, from pre-COVID of 800, you're still sitting at 1500 right now. You were at 400 at the lows. You jump over to the Analyze tab. There's a move for you, folks. $125 priced into their earnings coming out 
Tuesday after the after the bell, uh, $125. So there's a move for you with some volatility for Chipotle shares. We also get for this week, let's see, we get CVS. They'll be out with their numbers Wednesday before the market. We got Yum Brands before the market on Wednesday. We get O'Reilly Automotive Wednesday after the bell. We got Coca-Cola. Yeah, we got a bunch. We'll finish this up when we get back. We got Coca-Cola. We got Zillow Group. We'll be right back. Under Armour as well. Stay tuned, folks. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious tech, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps up 12 points right now. Tech stocks continuing higher right now, up 111 points. you got Amazon putting a bid there. You're up 2.25% right now. 32.22 for Amazon shares. Quite the surge higher last week for Amazon. And, folks, if you're thinking about getting into Amazon long-term retirement, it is not too late. I would begin dabbling right now because I'm not sure you're going to see 27.50 on Amazon shares ever again. Uh, this equity, you know, context-wise, you're talking about, an equity right now that is trading with a market cap of $1.6 trillion. Yeah, that's pretty lofty, but not lofty when you talk about Apple pushing $3 trillion right now. Apple, you're about 10 bucks away from that $3 trillion mark. You're trading right now up a buck 32 on Apple, up 7 tenths percent. Uh, so as I mentioned, we get CPI data on Thursday. We get a bunch of companies out with their earnings this week. One final article I wanted to pull up to finish up the, pro, the show, JP Morgan. Interesting when you think about, folks, we're not that far off the highs right now for some quick context here, right? You're trading 300 points off the highs. JP Morgan, though, what do they say? 
buy stocks. Rate hikes now priced in. Equity cycle is far from over. Um, strategists split, though, as Morgan Stanley. They're seeing a stock uh, stock winter, as in cold, ice cold, potentially. You know, tough to deny that market participants probably at this point well aware what's going to happen. But guess what, folks? You know, not only are we aware of the rate hikes are coming. We had a pretty staggering earnings season with the biggest earnings companies out there in dramatic fashion. Facebook missed in pretty big fashion, but they're their own animal right now. Google crushed it. Apple crushed it. Amazon crushed it. Okay? Keep that in mind because, yes, we've pulled back 300 points, but we've pulled back 300 points through. I mean, just to put this in some context here, there's your daily. OK, we've pulled back 300 points from January 3rd. But over that time, you've had Apple shares out with their numbers January 27th. You are a solid almost 10 percent higher over that period of time. Amazon shares from their earnings more than 10 percent. Right. What are you? Almost 20 percent above where we were at coming into that number. So the market recalibrated with 300 points off of the highs right now, but maybe they're priced in. We're going to find out, folks. Look for that CPI number on Thursday. We got Disney, Uber, uh, Lyft earnings, Coca-Cola. We got a lot coming up, folks. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's coming up next live with the Tiger Technicians Hour. Live programming all day, folks. We have everybody back in the saddle. Have a great Monday.